Hey, everybody, meet Shane Owens. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's my pleasure, actually. So the, the reason for this interview is because you will, will be attending a uh, country radio seminar, CRS 22. Is this your first? No, ma'am. We've been there four or five times. Looking forward to it. You know, uh, every year it's exciting to get out there and, and, and be with our fellow artists and see everybody at country radio because uh, they, they, they're the ones that make us. You know, everybody behind the scenes at country radio that play our songs is the reason we're able to do what we do. Do you find that when you attend this, do you get a lot of opportunities to talk to different DJs and program directors? Absolutely. You know, it's uh, they used to have it for a week. Now it's about three or four days. Uh, so we, we get in there and we, we shake as many hands as we can shake. And uh, fortunately enough, we've had uh, enough songs on the radio that we know a lot of people at radio personally. So it's always good to get in there and just shake their hand and hug their neck and tell them how much we appreciate them. Uh, you know, on a personal level for what they do for me and so many different artists, uh, you know, that dream about having our songs on the radio and dream about being country artists. And we've had a great career. Like I say, we know a lot of people at radio, but there's nothing like being there and talking to them face to face. You can talk to them on the phone or, uh, or you know, during the year if you're on a radio tour, but being there with them face to face and being able to hang out and actually spend some quality time with those guys is priceless. Yeah, speaking of radio tours, I haven't spoken to anybody about those in a while. Um, so I'm assuming you do them then. We do. You know, uh, when the when the COVID period came about, uh, we cut back a little bit because naturally radio stations, they were, some of them went to syndication and different things like that. And, uh, you know, our whole world changed. Our whole, for everybody, everything changed. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we look forward to Music Man. The new single we got out now is doing well, but it's nearing the end of its campaign. I think we got a couple more weeks on it. We're in the top 40 with it. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to getting back out there and seeing everybody at radio. But Country Radio Seminar is a great opportunity to to, to just soak it all in. And, 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 you know, we owe them a great debt of gratitude and just show them our appreciation. So let's talk about Music Man. I, I noticed the uh, some of the first lyrics are uh, Broken Spoke. <laughs> so let me ask you about that. Are you talking about the broken spoke in Nashville or are you talking about the broken spoke in Texas? Broken spoke in Texas. That's one of the most popular places out there in Texas. When you mention broken spoke, everybody thinks of Texas. Uh, it's one of those venues like Billy Bob and so many others. It's been out there for years and years. And, uh, you know, it's a great song. Uh, anybody that's tried to do this for a living or, or you know, pursue this. A career as a career in music. I mean, the song just hits home with so many people. And I think that's one reason it's so popular because there's so many out there, so many artists out there like me that are chasing this dream and, you know, just are thankful to be where we're at. Is this a co-write? Yes, I did not. I did not write this. It was uh, written by two good friends of mine in Nashville. Uh, you know, I, I get a lot of stuff from Galen Griffin and, you know, sadly, Joe Diffie's no longer with us, but I've cut a lot of Joe's stuff. Uh, him and Galen were real close. And you got people like Bruce Perch, Jeffrey Steele, Greg Barnhill, so many people that are believing in what we're doing now. And it takes a while to get those relationships established mm -hmm. over the years and then believing in what you're doing and, and the talent. And, and you know, I'm, I'm more traditional. So they, they believe in what I'm doing and excited about what I'm doing and are willing to sit down with me. If we, if we don't have an opportunity to write, they're always pitching me songs. And, uh, you know, those guys have been in Nashville forever and they're number one songwriters. So we tend to listen to everything they say in for sure. <laughs> right. Um, I feel like you've got a real 90s vibe uh, in, in your country music. And uh, I'm fine with that. I fell in love with country music in the 1990s. You know, because because of the 1990s or the uh, country music artists that became popular in the 1990s. And, and we're talking about, you know, anybody from uh, Garth Brooks, you know, to Alan Jackson. And I mean, you know, we're talking some big, big names. And uh, these guys are still around today. And, uh, you know, and they have the they have the they are the next generation legacy of the generation before them would have been like George Jones, you know, mm -hmm. so um, every I think every decade or it seems like it's every two decades that, you know, you you get a uh, a bunch of, you know, country artists and they survive, they live, they, they you know, there were some that, you know, had one, two songs out or one, two hits and you never hear or see of them again. And then there's then there's the big names and the George Straits. You know what I mean? 
Exactly. You know, there's so many people out there. If you go to one of my shows or you hear one of my records, you know, you can tell right off the bat that I was influenced by Keith Whitley and Randy Travis and Alan Jackson and George Strait and Jones and Haggard, uh-huh. Burn God, and so many different uh, artists that paved the way for me to be able to do what I do today because I love traditional country music. But I respect all artists that get out there and try to travel uh, no matter what genre. You know, if you're going to choose to do this for a living, it's, it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And I always tell everybody that. But we, we've been so blessed and honored to be out there on the road with some of the biggest names in country music. Uh, and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, we've been so blessed to play the Opry and different things like that. So we consider ourselves very blessed and we're excited about what the future holds. How many shows are you doing a year approximately? Well, before before COVID set up. Before COVID, yeah, it would have to be before COVID. Yeah, I hate to keep bringing that up. Before <laughs> COVID, uh, Hit. We were probably doing anywhere from 245 to 265. We played every weekend or, uh, you know, since this has hit, it's pushed everybody's. Uh, we had to cancel a lot of shows. We're now booking for 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're hoping to fill that calendar back up. And a lot of places are opening back up. You know, Texas is wide open. Um, you know, uh, we still have uh, COVID regulations in some states, mm-hmm. uh, but, but we're willing to uh, to wait it out and get back on that tour schedule. And, you know, before, before COVID hit, we were out with Toby Keith and a couple of big name artists. We were getting a lot of, uh, a lot of saturating and getting a lot of attention. And, and, uh, you know, when uh, people like that absolutely been kind enough to help us. So it, it is what it is, but we're looking forward to filling the calendar back up in 2022. And I've got a lot of artist friends that are doing the same thing, just kind of waiting and uh, the management team to line up dates. So we hope to fill that calendar back up and get out there soon. Well, I think outdoor shows, you know, if you do, you can do a lot of festivals and stuff too, where, you know, it's, it's, it's different than the indoor shows. You know what I mean? There's a far less worry on these outdoor shows. So you should be getting calls about coming out and doing festivals, fashion festivals, you know, um, you know, when you just said to me, you know, I hate to keep bringing up COVID and you, you know, when I said before COVID and I, I, I just made the connection to BC, like in the Bible. Mm-hmm. That's weird. You know, before COVID or before Christ, BC. I was like, that's like really weird that it yeah. has the same initials. You know, I don't know. I, I go weird places in my mind. What can I tell you? Well, I think I think we all do. We've all been through a horrible time with this. You know, our country uh, has, has suffered and we've all suffered. But I think, uh, you know, as long as, as we do the right thing and, and, and believe in one another and love one another more and have more respect for one another as a, as a nation, Yes, that we'll, that we'll be a lot better off. And I think that's what we need to practice as a, as a human race. Well, yeah, we need to be kind to one another. It's gotten exactly. crazy. We're not each other's enemies in this country. We're 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 one. We're, we're Americans for crying out loud. You know, let's anyhow. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple of kind of personal questions and some of them will okay. be kind of fun. So, okay. OK, so where were you born? I was born in Enterprise, Alabama. Oh, wow. Okay. You know what? I would have thought Georgia. I'm serious. <laughs> no, I would have, yeah, I, you I'm just, old. Well, you know what? The accents aren't that very different, right? Right. I'm a Alabama boy. Okay. Where is your favorite place in this world to be? Oh, man. Anytime I can go hunting and fishing, if I'm in the woods, I'm happy. I mean, I, I, there's so many different places I like to be, but this time of year, like deer season, I love to get out. I'm an avid outdoorsman. Uh, my whole family always have been. Anytime we can get out and go fishing or go hunting and, and just enjoy the outdoors. I've been always been an outdoor person. Uh, so if you've got any time I can get out there in the woods or in the, on the countryside, I'm happy. Okay. So what about wild turkey? Do you, I mean, do people actually, I get, I'm going to ask you this question because I don't know the answer. Do people actually uh, kill wild turkey and eat them? Oh yeah, yeah. So they just taste like they just tur- like they just people. taste like turkey. They don't taste any different than uh, you know these store bought. Uh, I know it probably sounds like a silly question to you, but I always wondered that because uh, for about a year I lived up in Liberty, Tennessee, and we had wild turkey. We were on like a fifty-six acre farm, and we had wild turkey up there all the time. And I remember looking out, thinking, "Hmm, I wonder what they taste like." <laughs> They're delicious, but you know it's just like deer or anything else you prepare. There's a certain way you got to prepare it. Right. Uh, because with venison like there, it's a gamey. But uh-huh. we've, we've, uh, we've, we've been doing this all our lives down here. So we know how to prepare it. We know how to cook it. And, uh, you know, that goes a long way. But, yeah, anytime I'm outdoors or uh, 
can be in the woods or hunting or fishing. That's that's where my happy place is at. And and of course, being in front of all our friends on stage, nothing compared to that. And what about recording? You gonna throw a little, you know, in the recording studio in there, or is that is that a very tense time? No, that's a, that's an absolutely wonderful time. You know, getting there and recreating magic uh, with the producers and the, and the musicians, and just getting there and honing our craft and. Uh, taking the blessings the good Lord gave us and turning it into something special. Uh, you know, with every song, we approach every song different. I love being in studio. That's one of my happy times as well. And just anytime we can get on the road, we're, uh, we're currently getting ready for a show this weekend. And like you said, you mentioned festivals and things. We're booking mm-hmm. festivals uh, already. So things, things are looking back up and we're excited about what the future holds for sure. Okay. So um, I asked you about the uh, famous place. Well, you already, I, I was going to ask you about hobbies, but you already said hunting. So we took, we kind of took care of that. Um, I'll, I'll, well, what is your favorite rifle? Well, I actually own a synthetic stock 270, bold action. My dad bought for me and I always cherish it because he bought it for me. Oh. He's still living at 78, but those are things, you know, uh, when your dad buys you something like that, it's sentimental. So that's my favorite rifle. I've shot a I uh, shot a lot of deer with that rifle right there. And, you know, it's just uh, something I'll always cherish and I'll always keep. Did he teach you? Yes, ma'am. Very early. I've got two sons uh, uh, that were hunting with me when they were four or five years old in the shooting house. And dad used to take me. He probably didn't want to take me because I wasn't as quiet as I should have been at times. <laughs> but but there's a lot of times they say, boy, sit down. There's only so much a four or five year old can do. When you're sitting in the woods four or five hours, you know, I'd be eating candy and making noise and, and bless his heart, he, it didn't bother him. We always got one to bring home. Did he have <laughs> you up the tr- up in the trees? He, he actually wouldn't let me get up in a tree till I was about 14 or 15. Or oh. Close to, close to 16. We, we always built shooting houses and we would hunt out of those. Something that had windows and a door in where he could lock me in there and we could look and sit and but it was always it was always fun, you know, and I, I taught my boys the same thing. And the good thing about that is when it's 20 degrees now, uh, dad don't have to get up at 430 and go. I can let them go harvest one and I ain't got to do anything but clean it. <laughs> OK, so that's kind of like building a fort. It's like building a fort together to be able to do that. I never I never realized that. I never realized that there was this preparation, you know, unless you've hunted, you wouldn't know this, you know, so you're, you're actually teaching me something today. I love that. I love to learn. Um, what is your favorite food? I'm a meat eater. I, I love, I mean, I love vegetables and all, but I mean, I like a steak. I like a good deer steak or a good tenderloin, um, deer sausage, anything, like I say, venison. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this for 20 years now, we haven't bought store any meat from the store. We live off the land still. Uh, we harvest our own our own uh, meat, and uh, you know, um, with the exception of processing some of it, the sausage is a little bit more complicated. Right. So we let some do it, but you know, we I got a pot of deer chili on the stove today as we speak. Do so you don't really? Get more, don't get more country than that, you know. <laughs> that is amazing. I'm I'm like hitting in all your spots and didn't even know that that's what I was doing. Uh, all all of your happy places, you know, that's incredible. Um, when you were growing up, what was your first celebrity crush? Oh, you know, I had, uh, I, w- I was a big fan of Elvis early, early on, you know, uh, I, I thought he was just the, the most, mag- I never actually got to meet him. I just, I was starstruck by seeing him on TV, you know, my mom and dad actually got to go see one of his shows in the seventies and uh, before we came along and uh, I've always been, but now Keith Whitley's my all time favorite artist of all okay. time. Keith Keith Whitley, there, there'll never be another Keith Whitley. I mean, everybody's tried to cover his stuff. I cover his stuff, but I think, uh, and I all due respect to Randy Travis because he's had the opportunity, we've had the opportunity to work together, and he's like a, a family member to me. He and Mary have been so kind to me, but Keith Whitley is all time. Uh, I put him up there at number one. Okay, so he's your he's your all time, not like Wellen? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's, I mean, he's got to be in there. He's got to be in that list. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you want to go top five. We say Keith Whitley, Randy Travis, George Strait, Alan Jackson. Uh, you know, I'd have to stretch it out to top ten because, like, <laughs> you said, um, like you said a while ago, just the class of 1989 alone, you had Travis Tritt, Garth Brooks. You had Alan. I mean, you had Randy Travis. You had so many artists that come, boom, on 1990, 89, 90. 
that just hit the scene and just blew country music up. I mean, you never heard a voice like Randy Travis when he came out with 1982, you know, right. in 1990. He just rocked the country world. And, uh, you know, Keith Whitley had been around a long time. Actually, Keith Whitley was supposed to cut a lot of those songs George Strait had hits with early on, but he never got to because, sadly, he left this world too early. Yeah, way too early. Very sad. Very sad. Um, all right. Well, and I was going to ask you what you like to cook, but I think we covered that already, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm big in the kitchen now. Did, did you did you have a list of my questions ahead of time or something? No, ma'am, I did not. This is almost the perfect interview. Scary. Ain't it? <laughs> I, yeah, it is. OK, so. Um, you were Music Row's Independent Artist of the Year in 2018, and you made your Grand Ole Opry debut in 2017, and you were invited back for a second appearance. What was that like to be on that stage? Well, you know, I tell everybody, we've played in front of hundreds and thousands of people, but I, I never get nervous. I'm always ready to go, but the Opry is the mother, cho mother church of country music. Uh, you know, it's the cream of the crop in country music, uh, and that's one place you definitely don't want to make any mistakes. So we were obviously uh, honored to play there twice. We got another invite back, and uh, we're looking forward to going back there. But the, when you play the Grand Ole Opry, I mean, I, it don't get any better than that in country music. Right. So let me ask you: which, Were you in the Ryman, or were you at you know over by the uh, over by the mall? Which building? we were by the mall. We okay. were by the mall. Have you been on the Ryman stage? Not yet, but we're 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 looking forward to getting that done. You know, my team and everybody's working on that. So. Uh, definitely, that's one of my bucket lists. Another one of my mm -hmm. things to check off my bucket list is to play the Opry at the Rhyme. Yes. And, uh, we definitely want to do that. Yeah, I mean, that's just a place <laughs> that I think everybody needs to experience at least once and, and to be on that stage. That stage has got, um, you know, I, I just imagine the ghosts that float by that stage every single night. Oh, uh, you know, well, I've been, we've been in that room several different times, but I've never actually got to play the Rhyme, the Opry at the Rhyme. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that'd be a big bucket list check off for me. And like you said, there's so many, oh, you looking at just, boys, if those walls could talk, man, everybody that was anybody played there. The history of that place is remarkable and you can feel it. You can feel it when you're in the building. It's, uh, I don't know, you just got, it's got a, a sense about it. Um, well, you've been to CMA Music Festival several times, right? And Jamboree in the Hills. And you were voted the top two American country music uh, artists uh, festivals of the year. Let me see, the top two American country music festivals of the year. Okay. Um, Cracker Barrel. What is this? You Okay, so 19 and God in the Ground She Walked On. What is this? Talk, talk to me about this with Cracker Barrel. Well, that's two of the biggest songs we ever recorded. You know, Cracker Barrel was so gracious enough to reach out to us and let us put those albums in their store. Uh, you think about Cracker Barrel, I mean, you're talking about hamburger steak, green beans, and country music. I mean, mm -hmm. Cracker Barrel goes hand in hand with country music, you know? Yes. We had, it was just an honor to be selected uh, to have them put our songs in their store with so many different artists like Randy Travis and so many different artists out there uh, from Tim McGraw to Faith Hill. They did uh, a couple of CDs, uh, you know, uh, that were dedicated to love songs and some gospel inspiration songs and different things. And we were absolutely honored to be a part of that. Right. So, I mean, it looks like some of your music touches, you know, in the, uh, in the faith and the Christian type genre, huh? Absolutely. You know, I grew up Southern Baptist and, uh, you know, my grandmother and grandmother, uh, father made sure we was in church every Wednesday and Sunday. I love gospel music. If you go to my Facebook page every Sunday, we, we post an old hymn or we try to. We don't do it every Sunday, but we try to, uh, you know, uh, you know, Facebook and social media has been good to us through the COVID period mm -hmm. where we could get to our fans. So, yeah, well, I love gospel music, grew up uh, in uh, singing gospel music in church and the choir and and my, my grandmother, speak of that, was one of my biggest influences as well. Uh, you know, she played the piano in church, so she influenced me. Uh, her, influ her influence goes a long way with me and my music as well. So you were named Rolling Stone Country. I don't know if people realize that Rolling Stone has like different, they have like different, their own different genres, but Rolling Stone mm -hmm. Country magazines, uh, 10 new country artists you need to know. How did yeah, that feel? Pretty, How did that feel? I mean, that's big. 
pretty special. It's like I said a while ago, we've been so blessed and honored to have all these accolades and things and, and to still be doing what we're doing, all the tough times we've been through, but uh, just to be in the categories that we've been in with different artists, legendary different artists and artists that are well-established that have sold millions of records and uh, to be mentioned in the same sentence as some of those like Luke Combs, uh, you know, when I won the 2018 Independent Country Artist Award, he won an award the same night and we were able to hang out and uh, you know, I appreciate what he's doing today. He's he's a big name country artist, and not not only do I appreciate his music, I appreciate the way he treats people. Mm-hmm. He treats people he treats people kind. He, he acknowledges people, and that's what it takes. It's so much. It's so. I mean, the music you got to be talented in this business to make it, but it, it it goes so much further than that. The way you treat people goes a long way, and I I really respect him and, and the way he treats his fans and, and friends and people around him. Yeah, no matter how big your music blows up, you got to be humble. Exactly. You know, because as fast as it came is as fast as it can go. Yes, ma'am. Overnight. Yes, absolutely. So talk to me about new music and new album um, and upcoming shows. Well, like I said, we're filling that calendar up as we speak. Uh, you know, we want everybody to go to the website, which is shaneowenscountrymusic.com and check out all the latest and greatest news. But we're looking forward to filling that calendar up. We're going in, actually going in studio to cut the next three singles that will be released back to back to back. We're going to cut those in Nashville uh, with, with some big time, big time musicians, big time producers and things like that. They're great songs. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, getting back in there. And uh, of course, Music Man still got some legs on it mm-hmm. and it's doing well. But we're going to go back in and cut the next uh, three singles back to back to back, like I said, in the next couple of months. So they'll be ready for country radio. And where can people find Music Man? They can go to shaneowenscountrymusic.com, all your social media outlets. Check us out on that. Everybody tweets, and they do the Facebook, and, uh, you know, they go to Spotify and so many different music outlets. Go all those outlets and just uh, check Music Man out, download it. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll have an EP out before long. That's something they can purchase as well. So just go check out our music and pick up a copy of it. Okay, so you want to tell um, everybody when you're going to be at CRS? We're going to be at CRS the 23rd through the 25th. Uh, thousands of artists coming into town. It's going to be crazy. It's a great thing. You get out there and see us. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot going on. We're going to be doing a lot of interviews and things like that. But it's always so great to go and, uh, and, and talk to the people that, that make us who we are. And people like yourselves, we owe a great debt of gratitude for what you do for artists like me. So I want to say thank you to you as well. Well, thank you for talking to me today. I'm going to let you go now because I know you're busy, but it's been a lot of fun. And I'm glad I, I'm glad I reached out and was able to talk to you about your favorite places. You know what I mean? I love that. I love that. You're well, real down you. home country and, and, um, and it shows, you know, you feel it when I, when I was listening to you earlier, I was like, oh, this guy's, he's so country. <laughs> and that's great. Yeah, that's, that's great. It's a good thing. I can't deny it. I want to thank you for your time, and I'm going to go stir this deer chili and thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, go up. get it before it burns. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. See ya.